In this video, we're going to show how to create new courses from the state inside of your PowerSchool instance. Most everyone in the state is familiar with our state course catalog, which is available at courses.alsde.edu. These course names and course numbers are what correspond to all of the courses we have set up inside of PowerSchool. Each year, the State Department develops new courses that are available for schools to use. If a school is deciding that they want to partake in offering that course to their students, they will need to create the course locally inside of PowerSchool, and here's how you will do it. From District Office, you will go to District Management, Courses and Programs, and Courses. Now, one of the very first things that I tell people to do is before trying to add the course as a new course right off the bat is to actually search to make sure that the course is not one that might have been brought in when we first implemented PowerSchool, but you just have not elected to turn it on yet for your district. Really, the only ones that we have to add the new course for up here are going to be those that the State Department made available after the 21 school year, but I always like to check. So in this case, there is a credit recovery course number, I'm going to search for it here to show it to you, of uh, credit recovery English grade 10 that I would like to make available for my schools inside of PowerSchool. So right now, as you can see, I've got a filter on here where I was searching for a digital technology course and, and making it available not too long ago. I actually want to search by this brand new course number, and I'm going to hit apply. And you'll see that this course is actually not in my database at all. Notice I've got zero of 14 schools selected and I'm looking against all types of courses, active, inactive, unavailable, and it does not show. And just so that you know, you can search by numbers, names, and other attributes to the course. One mistake that I do often see people make when looking to see if a course actually exists is they'll sometimes go in here and select a course thinking, oh, well, I want to search for this course at my high school, but if you've not made it available, it's not going to show anywhere. So I tell everyone, always make sure this top number says zero out of all of your schools. So now that we know this course actually does not exist and I need to create it brand new from scratch, I'm going to click the new course button. And this page will allow us to search the state catalog, and I can search one of two ways. I can search by starting to type in a name. So if I start typing in CR, you'll see that it populates everything with the CR inside of there. Um, or if I know the number, I can type that number in. So in this case, I'm going to type the number, and it goes directly to the course, and this is the one I would like to create. Now, this course has a local suffix, which means it can be locally editable. So if I wanted to shred it to become different variations of it, I could. But in this case, I'm going to leave it just like it is. And one thing that I always tell people to do is to make sure that your full course number is both of these numbers together. You, we have seen times where courses will truncate those last two zeros and give you an eight-digit course number, which can cause some issues. So you always want to make sure that you have that full course number here. And if it does not show up that way, always throw that local suffix of those last two digits inside of there. Down here at the bottom, or in the middle area, I should say, it's going to say, which schools would you like to make this course available for? So in this case, I don't want it for all of my schools, but I do want it for my high school here. So I'm going to choose just that high school. What year do you want to make it available for? Well, I'm making it for the current year. And notice that in the spring, when we go and create our next new school year, it will automatically make any course that is available for the current year available for the next year. So we're going to set it for this year. How many hours is it worth? So this is a one hour credit class. Um, it is a core class, an ELA, and an English class. If you have a separate local credit type that you have created that this needs to be designated for, then you will just need to type that in here. What's your default maximum enrollment? So choose what is your district policy on that. What grade scale would you like attached to this course? So in, in my case, I'm going to make it the 100 point grade scale. You might have a default grade scale, so just make sure you attach the appropriate one. 
is this a weighted course? Is this something where added value points should be given um, when grades are stored for your GPA purposes? In this case for me, it is not a weighted course, so I will not put a 0.5 or a 1 as an added value. Um, do you want this grade to be stored when you store grades? So if a student is taking this course on their schedule and the teachers have given grades, do you actually want those grades to store? If you did not want them to store, you would check this box. And sometimes we will do that with, with courses like homeroom, things such as that. But this wouldn't be appropriate in an actual credit bearing course. Is it to be included in GPA class rank honor roll? You will just make those appropriate designations there. And do you want this course to be excluded on report cards and transcripts? Again, since it's credit bearing, that's not applicable, so we'll leave that here. And once you have that all in place, you then hit submit. And the course is created. Once the course is created, you can then uh, use that course to apply to a teacher schedule and enroll students in that course at your individual schools.